Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Honor and power. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord our God. For the Lord. and glory. Salvation and glory. Oh, honor and power. Honor and oh, power. Unto the Lord. Unto the Lord our oh, God. For the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Oh, how many know the Lord our God is yes, omnipotent? The Lord. Strong tower. 
the righteous run into it and they are saved. You want to bless the Lord. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord our God. For he is great. He is greatly to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Praise the Lord, all ye people. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him with a hand praise. Praise him on the instrument. Praise him with a shout. Praise him. All that men will praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercies endure unto all generations. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. I dare you to thank him right now. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what the situation is, but I'm declaring to you by the Spirit of the Lord to thank him now, to praise him now, whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is, he already worked it out. He already worked it out.
Lord, praise him. You make investments for future gain. You thank him now. You praise him now because he already did. Your investment is the praise. Your investment is thank you, Lord. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. It's already done. a good God. Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. We are now going to turn our service over to receive your tithes and your offering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We are grateful for the praises that went up so we can expect the blessings to come down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is a good God. Hallelujah. He will move. If you need an envelope, raise your hand and the usher will service you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless. I'll come around and collect if everybody's ready. Amen. If that's everyone, we're going to go ahead and bow our heads corporately unto the Lord as we pray over the offering. Father, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for those that gave today, Lord. And we also ask that you bless those that wanted to give, that couldn't give, Lord, that you may bless all of us more abundantly, Lord, and multiply this offering times a hundredfold, Lord, to continue the wondrous works of this ministry and this church to perform great things, Lord, in this upcoming year. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to now turn the service over to our sister Liza for the church announcements. Amen. It's going to start promptly at 315, so if everyone can make it back to their seats at that time, that would be great. Thursday, December 23rd, there will be no Bible study due to the Christmas Eve holiday. Thursday, December 30th, Bible study is canceled due to our New Year's Eve service, which will be Friday, December 31st 
at our in-person service at 9.45 p.m. Bible study will continue to be held virtually via Zoom on Thursdays at 7.45 p.m. for Mount Olive and T.O.P. until further notice. Please continue to invite your friends and family to our in-person Sunday services at church and our virtual Bible study via Zoom on Thursdays at 7.45 p.m. All church members, please check your emails for updates concerning our services in church. And please remember to evacuate the church directly after all the services today so the cleanup crew can clean and disinfect the church. We have some save the dates for January and the new year, so please write these down. Saturday, January 15th is our next spa gathering via Zoom at 4 p.m. Amen. <laughs> Saturday, January 22nd is our next mag mega gathering via Zoom at 10 a.m. Amen. And Tuesday, January 25th, our quarterly fast begins at 6 p.m. through Friday, January 28th at 6 p.m. Amen. Our birthday and anniversary announcements for this week are tomorrow, December 20th, is our brother Leon's birthday. Amen. <laughs> Happy birthday, Leon. <laughs> And Tuesday, December 21st, is our brother Dion and sister Cynthia's anniversary. Amen. <laughs> Happy anniversary, guys. To God be the glory. Please remember, we do have our prayer box available for anyone who would like to make a prayer request on behalf of themselves or someone else. It will remain anonymous and be given to our prayer group. Counseling or studying of the Bible with Bishop and Pastor is available by appointment phone or email. If you would like to make a special prayer request, please see myself and it will be given to Bishop and Pastor. Any other announcements or events you would like to place on the calendar, please see myself or Sister Latoya. Please keep our Bishop, Pastor, their family, and our church family in prayer before God. Sick and shut in the families everywhere. Fulfill my joy by one mind. That's Philippians 2.2. 2. At this time, let us please stand and receive our Bishop Troy V. Ingram, Sr. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, give God a bit of praise in that. Come on and give the Lord a bit of praise in that. Hallelujah. We give God praise, we give God glory and honor. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God for his blessings, for his goodness, for his mercy. Amen. We are here by the grace of God. Amen. And we bless God for all that he's done, for all that he is about to do. Amen. For God has done great things, hasn't he? Yes. God is good and all the time. Amen. They can eat, I'm going to need them glasses. I left my glasses home. Amen. So we thank God for another Christmas season. Amen. How many glad to see another Christmas season? Amen. We're here alive and well in the presence of the Lord. Amen. God has kept us. Amen. Enabling us to see another one. Thank you, brother. And we praise God for it. Amen. For without him, we could do nothing. We're going to ask each and every one to please keep our brother Dominic, amen, our sister Hargett, in prayer. Amen. He's, he's home resting. Amen. We believe in God to heal the body. Amen. 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 For our God is Jehovah Rapha. What does that mean? Our healer. Amen. That's right. God, our healer. He's able to heal, and we thank God for his healing power. We give God praise for this season. This season is kind of big for Pastor and I. We have so much going on. We have Christmas. We have our anniversary. We have the new year. Amen. And then we got this great big other holiday coming up. Somebody bring me a tissue, please. We have this great big other holiday coming up in January. Amen. We won't talk about it because I don't want to, I want to stay modest. So I won't discuss, amen, my birthday. <laughs> amen. On the mic in the church. I won't tell you January 7th is my birthday 
because that's just the way I am. And you can't make me tell you neither that January 7th is Bishop's birthday. Amen. That's right. No matter what you do, you can torment and torture me. Amen. We thank God for our Facebook audience being on today. Amen. With us, God bless you. Amen. To those of you on YouTube watching it after the fact, amen, we thank God for you. Amen. 35 years of marriage. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 54 Christmas I have seen. Woo! Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. It's good to be alive. Amen. In the house of the Lord, where the presence of the Lord is. We thank God for our, our evangelist Johnson and Deacon Johnson being here today. Amen. Good to see them. Amen. In Mount Olive today, the kids have a little Christmas recital, and we're going to be blessed by them today. Amen. Come on and give the children a good, good, a good hand praise. Amen. Encourage them. Amen. I remember when uh, Sister and Pastor and I were growing up in Tiana, little children in the church doing all these things, and now we sitting back watching our children. Boy, life has a way of playing jokes on you. <laughs> life has a way of playing jokes, and we thank God for it. It's called progress. Amen. Moving on. One generation's going out. The next generation's coming in. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Amen. You know, when you can see your children doing the things that you used to do, amen, we'd be rushing here trying to get Toya and TJ together, and now Toya sees what it feels like. She's getting her medicine back. <laughs> amen. We had ours. Now it's her turn. Amen. It's a blessing, and we thank God for each and every one of you today. Saints, open up your Bibles with me to Luke, the second chapter. Thank God for the word. Luke, the second chapter. So all of you who didn't hear, Merry Christmas. Amen. Amen. Let's keep Christ in Christmas. And I, I don't remember who sings the song, but there. I think it was Kirk Franklin. There is no Christmas without him. Amen. Amen. Santa just don't cut it. Rudolph is short. <laughs> Amen. It's not about the snowman. I got news. It's not even about the toys or the gifts. It's all about Christ and what he did. How he came to earth in a human suit, but still kept his sovereignty and Godhead saved us from our sins by dying on the cross, came back, amen, from the dead to announce that he had all power of heaven and earth in his hands. Amen. This is the story that's worth telling. And we tell the story of Santa and the Rudolph and the reindeers and Mr. Scrooge and Mr. Grinch. Amen. But let me tell you something. The greatest story ever told is the birth of our Savior. The one who came just to die for you and I. Loved us so much that he came to earth, put on our suit of flesh. But he didn't stay that way. For when he died, he resurrected with an eternal body. And you know what I love about him? Because the Bible even lets us know, it shows us in Revelations 4 and 5, that when we see him, he's still going to be that slain lamb that was slain for us. When John seen him, he was the lamb that was slain for our sins. Come on and give God a hand praise if you believe it. Come on and praise the Lord if you believe it. The lamb that was slain for our sins. God said in Revelation, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. 
from the beginning, before we were created, God had already had a plan to deliver us from the sin that could destroy us. Don't we thank God for his wonderful plan? Amen. Amen. Always with a plan. And we thank God for his plan. Amen. Say to God, the book of Luke, second chapter, and also I want you to get the minor prophet Micah. The minor prophet Micah. And I want you to get the fifth book of Micah. Amen. I'll give y'all a little extra time. No, that's not a book we always go into, but it is the word of the Lord. Amen. Because when we speak of Jesus, how many know that in the Old Testament, we are given full account of everything that Jesus was going to do? Every, the Old Testament lets us know everything that was going to happen with our Lord and our Savior. Your title, Spiritual Warfare. We are in spiritual warfare every single day of our life. We are going to be in spiritual warfare. Always remember that. Always keep that close to your heart and know that. I'm sorry, I said Michael the second chapter. Micah the fifth chapter. Micah the fifth chapter. Whether it's mental, spiritual, emotional, we will always be in spiritual warfare. And anyone that's not having spiritual warfare, then you need to question, what are you doing in the Lord? Because Satan only calls on spiritual warfare for those he feels threatened by. And if you are not a threat to the enemy, then something's wrong mean that he could be leaning on you for support or he knows that you're not going to go against him but I come to let you know anybody that loves the Lord will endure tribulation Jesus said in this world ye shall have tribulation this is what he said he said but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world so even though we have trouble and problems in this life, Jesus overcame the world. And because he overcame the world, so will we in the name of Jesus. Our focus, the king is in the building. Amen. The king is in the building. We've seen that in the praise and worship this morning. The king is in the building. Amen. No one had a, had a dance, but y'all was giving God praise. Amen. Because we know that the king is in the building. And more importantly, let me tell you something. The king is in this building. The king is in that building. The king is in that building. The king is in that building. Because he dwelleth not with temples made with hands. He dwelleth in our temples, which is the body. And our body is the temple of the living God. And if you don't believe it, you need to go back in the New Testament where Paul said in the New Testament, Know ye not that your body is the temples of the who? Living God. You are a temple of God. So please don't come to church and expect God to be in this building. No. God's not coming to this building. God should have come in you. And if he's come in you, then I come to let you know the spirit of the Lord is here. The spirit of the Lord is in this house. Listen, God is in his holy temple. Let the whole earth keep silent. Amen. God is in the building. Amen. Let me tell you something. When God's in the building, he'll heal. When God's in the building, a miracle can take place. When God's in the building, somebody who's grieving will get joy. Somebody who's in confusion will get peace. Those who will hate will get love. Why? Because God is in the building. He removes all those things that are contrary to us. Why? Because when he's in the building, he brings what he has for us. Remember, when the Bible told us about the fruits of the Spirit, it said at the last part, it said against such is no law. There is no law against love, joy, peace, kindness. There's no law against them things because those things should always be flowing within us. 
And if the king is in you, guess what? It's flowing. Now, I'm not, I'm not telling you you're not going to see no episode of your husband or wife acting like a devil or acting like they ain't saved. What I'm telling you is once you start to remember that the king is inside of you, you'll show the king some hospitality. Amen? Because that's the problem that's going on with a lot of Christians today. They're not showing the hospitality that's supposed to be given to the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to welcome him into our lives. We're supposed to welcome him into our day. We're supposed to give him free reign and rule over our decisions. But a lot of times, we're too busy trying to do it ourselves. And this can be a problem. The king is in the building. Our target to break forth, to break forth and prophesy. Amen. To break forth and prophesy. I was going back looking over my messages and I came across the message of Ezekiel. Son of man, shall these bones live? <laughs> and Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest. <laughs> and God said, Speak to the dry bones. Because God has given us the power in our mouth. For we walk by faith, not by sight. God has given us the power in our mouth to speak to dead things and they can resurrect because of the faith we have in Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. There's life in your mouth. If the king is in your building, let me tell you something. There's life in your mouth. Oh, I don't know if you talk, I don't know if you're thinking about it, but you need to know it because when you start to speak life over your over your problems and over your situations in life, let me tell you something. The word of God will overtake whatever the enemy is trying to do. When you speak life out of your mouth, there's you need to speak life words out of your mouth. Proverbs told us that death and life is in the power of the tongue, and ye shall eat the fruit. In other words, which one are you speaking? Whichever one you're speaking, that's the fruit you're going to eat. Are you eating the fruits of death, or are you eating the fruits of life? So if you start speaking life, guess what? You're going to bring forth life. If you start speaking life, life is going to take over on everything around you. But if you start speaking death, oh well. That answers for itself. <laughs> to break forth means to burst out, to come out of, to emerge from it. When, you, when someone breaks forth, they're coming out of something. See, and when you come out of something, you need to prophesy. See, it's not enough just for you to get healed. You need to get healed and then prophesy healing on somebody else. It's not enough for you just to get healed from your emotional past or from the past of what somebody's done to you. What you should do is after you come out, then prophesy on somebody else that they will come through. This is what happens when we prophesy. The word of God showed us the, showed us the importance of prophecy. And when we open our, our mouths, we need to know that our words can shake up some things. Our words can bring some things to pass. In the book of Micah, the fifth chapter, and the second verse, it says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah. Ephratah is uh, the poetic name for Bethlehem. So he said, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler of in Israel, whose going forth, listen, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. This is Micah, the minor prophet, speaking on the level of Isaiah. Now, just to let you know where Micah was as far as um, history goes, Michael was be, Micah rather prophesied during Isaiah's times. They were prophesying together, but 
Isaiah's prophecy, which is why he's called the major prophet, is because he prophesied much more than Micah did. Micah was a minor prophet, but listen, listen, minor prophets didn't mean you spoke little prophecies. Minor prophet could also mean you spoke major prophecies. And I want you to know right now that this was a major prophecy from, my, from Micah because Micah was giving us the birthplace of our Lord. He was also telling us that he would be ruler in Israel, whose going forth is from old. And let me tell you something, that don't sound like no Nebuchadnezzar, because Nebuchadnezzar was born from a woman, but he wasn't of old. This is Micah speaking of our Savior, who's been king from the beginning. As John said, in the beginning, listen, was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was what? With God. And Micah's given us this prophecy of where Jesus is to be born. Just like Isaiah gave us prophecies of our Lord. When Isaiah said, for unto us a son is born. Unto us, no, no, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall what? Be upon his shoulders. That was the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah wanted us to know that Jesus was coming. A child is born. And he's going to be born of a virgin. For he said, a virgin shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name what? Emmanuel. Being interpreted meaning what? God with us. Wasn't he with us? Didn't he walk the earth with us? Didn't he heal? Didn't he raise from the dead? Didn't he cast out demons? Didn't he cause miracles to happen? Didn't he die for our sins? That was Jesus. This is what the prophets spoke about. This is how the prophets let us know who the master was. Again, Micah, but thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thy be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth to me, unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. That's the Savior. That's the Savior. Finally, your topic, God delivers from dryness. Again, God delivers from dryness. I think back to the prophet Isaiah and how God often gave the prophets revelations of things and how he spoke to us in the sixth chapter of his call. And Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, listen to this, I saw the Lord, and he was high and lifted up, and his train, in other words, his robe, which showed his glory, his train filled the temple. His glory was all in the house. This was the same glory that in the book of Chronicles, that when God came in the temple, that the priests and the musicians and everybody was in the temples had to get out. Why? Because the glory of the Lord was in the temple. See, where the glory of the Lord is, he comes and he takes over. And Isaiah said, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the king. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, I saw the Lord that he was high and lifted up. Meaning that he was exalted above everyone. He was exalted above the earth. He was exalted more than any king of Israel. Why? Because he's the king of kings. And his glory filled the temple. And Isaiah saw him. And God spoke to him. God used him. Greatly, And God spoke many things through him, and he told him of the life of the Savior. And I want to tell you something, if you ever do a study on it, you will be so blessed to find out that everything that Jesus did in the New Testament was already spoken through the prophets. The healing already spoken. The raising up from the dead was already spoken. 
His crucifixion was already spoken, even though people didn't understand it. Who do you think Isaiah was talking about when he said, he was wounded for my transgressions? He was bruised for my iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, what? We, not he, we are what? Heal. And who other could that be than Jesus Christ who took the crucifixion for you and I and then rose from the dead with all power over sin and the devil and all power over the world. And now he reigns forever. And he's coming back to pick up his church. He's coming back on a cloud in the revelation and every eye shall see him. God is not doing this thing in secret. This thing is wide open. And the only reason why the world doesn't know it because it won't accept Jesus. But God is doing great things. So when we look about it and we think about it, God delivers from dryness. I need you to understand what dryness is. Dryness is something that doesn't have any moisture or any wetness. It's just dry. Some of you, before you came to church, you took some lotion to put it on your dry skin because you knew your skin was dry. So you put lotion on your skin to get moisture in your skin. Well, let me tell you something. Dryness in the spiritual is even worse than dryness in the natural. Because when you are dry spiritual, spiritually, is a dangerous thing because it gives openings for the enemy to come in because you're in a season of dryness. And see, dryness hurts. In dryness, people don't really seek the Lord much. You have to encourage. That's why we come here every Sunday to hear a word from the Lord. In case any dry season has stepped into your life, Now, we're giving God the opportunity, we're giving God the chance by coming to the church and hearing the word for the word to give us the wetness that we need to come out of the dry season. But let me tell you something, out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. I come to tell you that there's water inside of you. There's water in your belly. Now we need to let that water out of our mouth and prophesy over our lives. Prophesy over our children. Prophesy over our situation so that we might be healed. And if there's anybody here in a dry season, I speak and prophesy under the name of the Lord that you won't be dry anymore. Because after this word goes forth, the spirit of the Lord is going to lift you up and deliver you from trouble and help you in your time of need. Because God is in the building and he's come to heal. He's come to deliver. He's come to set free. Is there anybody that needs Jesus in this place? This is the hospital. This is the place where you need to be because God is here to deliver. Sister Michelle sung this morning, his presence is here to heal. He's here to lift up. He's here to heal. God is in the house. Nothing can stay the same. No one can walk out here the same. You you got to be different when you leave this place. Pastor used to sing, you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. You won't. Wrapped up, guilty and shame. No. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You walk in the flesh, you're going to stay dry. You walk in the flesh, you bring danger into your life. Walk in the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, walk in the Spirit. Tell your neighbor again, walk in the Spirit. Turn with me, as the Lord's leading me, turn with me to Numbers 24. Thank God for the word. Keep Luke, but go to Numbers 24. In the book of Numbers, there's a strange story there. Because there's a prophet there in the stories by the the name of Balaam, 
who is hearing from God. And God is speaking to him. And God is speaking to him because there's a king named Balak who wants Balaam to curse Israel. But God keeps speaking to this prophet and telling this prophet, you can't do that. For the people are blessed. Oh, how many people know they're blessed in here today? How many of you know that you are blessed in here? See, this is why hope is so important. I've been saying it for a few weeks, and I'm going to continue to say it. This is why hope is so important. Because when you hope, you confidently walk in expectation and anticipation of what God is about to do. You walk in expectation no matter what comes in your life. No matter what happens, walk in expectation of a great thing happening. And it comes from the Lord. How many know all good things come from God? And so God deals with this prophet. So I want to go with me to Numbers, and we're going to read from verse 15 down to 19. And I want you to understand that some things had already happened, but I brought you to this part because I want you to see what the prophet is up against. The king is offering him riches to curse God's people. But did not God told Abraham that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. I need you to know that we are under that same covenant given to the father Abraham. And I want you to know something that Abraham was not a Hebrew when he received that covenant. Please understand that Abraham was a Gentile when he received that covenant. He did not become a Hebrew until he was circumcised. So when he received the covenant, I want you to know that he was one of us. He was a Gentile. He could have been a black. He could have been a Puerto Rican. He could have been a Chinese. But thanks be to God that the father of faith, who God called, did not fail the call. And he got blessed. And through him came the seed, Jesus. And that's why we're here together. That's why we're a family in the body of Christ. Because Abraham heeded the call, and when God spoke to him, he listened and obeyed the voice of God. And so now, Satan is out to curse the nation. It's just like I told the Bible study class. I said, you know, some people would never put this together, but if you look at, if you look at Genesis and you see the chapter of, the, of sin... And you see where men begin to multiply on the earth, immediately Satan comes in and tries to destroy the humanity and tries to destroy the human race. He jumps in and he causes men, he causes uh, uh, evil to marry the women so that evil men are born, so much so that God winds up destroying the world during the time of Noah to get rid of this evil, this evil horde of people that had come upon the earth. See how much God loves us? And right now, the king wants the prophet to curse God's people. Let's read from that point. Numbers, nine, Numbers 24, verse 19. Out of Jacob, are you with me? Because you better stay, you better, you better stay focused. Listen what the Lord says. Out of Jacob shall come he. Anybody catching on yet? The, the Lord is speaking about somebody. But who's he talking about in the beginning of the book, in the first five book of the Hebrew? Listen what he says. Out of Jacob shall come he. Did we not just read something like this in Micah where God said it again? Where there was someone coming? who God knows is coming, and God sent him to come. And we read it again. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up a parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Why? Because he came against the people of the living God. Anybody that comes against God's people won't last. 
You know what? I tell people all the time, you know what? If you want to leave the church, just leave the church. But don't bother me. Don't bother my wife. I assure you we are people of the living God. And what I don't want is for God, I don't want God to be upset with you because you bothered his people. For my Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And I come to tell you that's not just for the preacher. But I come to tell you that's every anointed person that sits here in this room who knows that the king is in the building. God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Meaning that the devil is not allowed to put his hand on you. You are the anointed. You are God's servant. God's woman servant, know that God is with you. You cannot curse what God has blessed. And though they tried to do it, though he wanted Balak, he wanted Balaam to do it very much. Balaam could not curse what God had blessed because what Israel was doing, they were going to a place so that they could prepare to bring forth he. God was protecting one whole nation for one person that was to come. The nation was important to him because of one man. And I come to let you know that one man is Jesus. That one man is Jesus. Jesus was coming. So God protected the nation for one man. And if one died for all, then let all die for one. God protected the nation for one. He that was to come through the nation. God protected them, brought them through the Red Sea. God protected them and brought them through Jordan. God gave them quail from the sky, made the birds just fall down so they can eat them. God sent them angels' food, sent them manna from heaven. God took a, a, a log and put it in the water and turned the water sweet that was bitter so that they can drink. Why? For one person. Y'all not getting it, are you? For one person, God guided the whole history of one nation for Jesus Christ so that he could come and save you and save you and save you and save you. And save you. It was all because of Jesus. So that when the Egyptians got behind them and there was mountains on the left and right and then there was water in front of them, Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And God said, what do you have in your hand? Stretch it out. And Moses stretched it out. And what happened? The sea opened and the people went over. Oh, and when their enemy tried to go through, <laughs> Woo, the walls of water came crushing down and stop your enemy. What am I trying to tell you? That God will stop your enemy for just you. You are that important to God that God would stop traffic so you can get across. Because God will do it. Why? Because there's a place he has for you to get to. There's a position you got to fulfill. God's got to do what he has to do to get you to where he's taking you. That's why we can follow God's word. Because God's going to do what he said he's going to do. How many know God has never failed? How many know God has a track record that's perfect? How many know that God has a track record that's excellent? He's never failed you, and I don't care what you go through. God is still good. God is still great. God is still delivering. All you got to do is trust him, and I come to let you know that your day has been set to come out your dry season. You coming out this wilderness. You were not meant to stay here. You're coming out the wilderness. Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years. But what happened? God brought them out the wilderness, didn't he? I bet you they were tired of circling. Didn't we just see this rock yesterday? 
This is the same rock from 20 years ago. Yes. But guess what? One season, God made them stop circling that rock and take a different direction. That's what God is doing for all of us. He's guiding our life. And you know, all the time, we don't understand it. I don't understand why I have to go through this. Why is this? Why did we get hit with a pandemic? It's all in the plan of God. <laughs> it, it, it looks rather bad, but it's in God's plans. <clears throat> why did I have to go through heart surgery? Why did I have to go through heart condition? It's all in the plan of God. Why did I have to go through this or go through that? Let me tell you something. God's got it all planned out. He's got your life. From the very beginning, your life was set. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth. Psalm 37, go find it. Balaam couldn't hurt them. Now turn to Luke 2. Balaam couldn't hurt them, and God wouldn't allow him to curse them. He wouldn't allow Balaam to curse them because he had something that was going to happen. Isaiah said, who has believed our report? And to who is the arm of the Lord revealed? In other words, to whom is the power of the Lord revealed that God has power to do great and mighty things? How many believe that God has power to do great and mighty things? I want you to clap your hands right now in this place. If you know that God has the power to do mighty things, he will turn everything around and turn it upside down just to bring you out, to bring you to the place where he wants you to be. He will turn it around. Amen. You don't even know how many people God stopped on your behalf. How many wars God's got in front of because he didn't want you in the midst of it. You don't even know how many guns could have hit you already. People getting shot in New York. People getting shot in Chicago. People getting shot 15 minutes from me. But you know what? Thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He didn't say it wouldn't be made. God said it wouldn't prosper. And God's going to keep me in my dry season. This world is becoming very dry. <sighs> Dr. David Jeremiah said, I, 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 I didn't think I would see the day. I never thought I'd see the day for the things that's going on today. We're fighting over whether or not abortion is right. Are you kidding me? We're, we're fighting over whether it's right for men and women to raise children with their own sex. We're, we're fighting over this. Really, that goes to show you where the world is. That goes to show you how far back the world has gone backwards from God. Oh, but how many know God is still going forward? How many know God is still going forward? Isaiah said, who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord represents his strength. is symbolic of God's power. For there's power in his arm. God is powerful. God is powerful. If he's able to lead a nation from a madman named Pharaoh, and he's able to cause Pharaoh to let them go. And he can keep them and not only bring them out of Egypt, but they brought spoil without defeating them in a war. Y'all know that, right? They spoiled the Egyptians. The Egyptians gave them their goods to get out. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear it, did you? They were, such, they were such a threat to Egypt's existence that Egypt blessed them to leave. <laughs> because God was with them. And if God is for us, <laughs> it don't matter if the whole world hates you. When God is for you, can't no one hurt you because God will protect you. God will keep you. 
because the Lord is with you. Pharaoh couldn't hold them. Pharaoh had to let them go. Pharaoh had to give them up because God protected Israel even in a dry time. Even in all their wickedness and evil, God kept them because he wanted to bring something great forth from them. Whew. How many of us have went through stupidness in our life? Stupidness caused by others, stupidness caused by us. Yes, come on and admit it. If I'm the only one, I'll say it. Stupidness caused not by just others, but by me. Because a lot of the things I went through, I didn't have to go through, but I was stupid enough to go through them because I did what I did. See, there are consequences for actions. For every action, there is a reaction. And the reaction depends on what we do. So Isaiah said, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and a root out of dry ground. And he has no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. Now go with me to Luke. Luke, the second chapter. One of the greatest, shortest stories I've ever read about this woman named Anna. That when Joseph and Mary had came to the temple to return their son unto the Lord and to, for Mary to be cleaned from her uncleanliness coming through birth, there was something that happened. They met up with a man named Simeon who prophesied over them and blessed them. Simeon even told Mary what was going to happen to her soul because of Jesus. That she would be pierced through because of the things her son would go through. Simeon told her that. That's God. Because he waited all this time. He, God wouldn't even take him home till he saw God's salvation in the earth. God kept him alive until he saw the Savior come in the building. God kept him alive. So next, Mary and Joseph ran in to Anna. And Anna begins to speak to them. Anna was a prophetess. Her father's name was uh, 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 Phanuel. He was of the tribe of Asa, a tribe we don't hear about much because there was uh, not a lot written about them. But it doesn't mean that no one good came out of them. I want you to know that good can come out of what people don't see it in. Because there's greatness in each and every one of us that God is going to bring out of us. And all we got to do is be confident and trust in him. And God's going to allow it to be seen who we are. Because how many know that it doesn't matter what others say about us? What matters is what God says about us. It doesn't matter what you think of me. What matters is what God thinks of me. See, because what God thinks of me will last. What you think of me will fade away. <laughs> matter of fact, I don't really care what you think of me as long as I know Jesus loves me. Because I know that Jesus saved me and delivered me, it really don't matter what you think nor say. Say what you want. I am a child of God. I am a part of the body of Christ. I am what God says I am. And you can't change that. Jesus said, who is in my hand? No one can pluck them out. Do you know you can't even touch me? I'm the real untouchable. I'm the anointed one of the Lord. And so are you because the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Oh, say, I'm untouchable. I belong to Jesus. Give the Lord a hand. Praise if you believe it. Bless the Lord if you know it. Give him praise. Give him praise. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, we really don't look at the time, but history tells us, and it's well known, that from the book of Malachi 
to the birth of Jesus past 400 years. 400 years from Malachi to Matthew. To us, it seems like it's not that long because we just turned the page from Malachi and we had Matthew. So we don't think about the 400 years that went by. See, I want you to know, see, one day to the Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years to the Lord is one day. Because, see, God controls time but lives in eternity and controls eternity too. So I need you to understand, God don't just control time, he controls eternity. He controls your life. He controls what's going to happen the next moment and the next minute. So whatever you're going through, I want you to know it's not happening just because it's, it's by chance. It's because God has gave permission for it to happen. And if he caused it to happen, he's also going to cause you to come out of it. For there is no temptation, but such that is common to man. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be attempted above that ye are able but will, with the temptation, also make what? A way of escape. <laughs> so in your time of testing, God has created a way to escape. In your time of trial, there's an escape. So I'm going to let you know that this won't last always. Somebody said this too will pass. This too will pass. I'm having financial hardship. It'll pass. I know you may not see it or you may not think of it, but I come to let you know it will pass. You got to believe it that way. You got to see it. Well, Bishop, I'm having some pain right now. It will pass. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I got to bless the Lord at all times. And guess what? It will pass. It will pass when? When you're blessing him, when you're praising him, when you're glorifying him. Not glorifying him for the pain, but glorifying him that you're coming out of the pain. Glorifying him that you're coming out of the problem. Glorifying him that you're coming out of the financial situation. Glorifying him that your marriage will get better. That everybody around you will be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let it be. Mm. This woman, Anna, a prophetess, listen, verse 36. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Aser. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity, Seven years from her virginity was she married, and seven years after being married to one man, guess what? He died. He died. Seven years of being married, and then he died. For some people, this would wreck their world. They would lose their mind. They would go into the shadows and not come out. Go in, home, go in their home and, and have a pity party. And just think about the memories and the past and just grieve themselves. But let me tell you something. God has not called you to grieve. Weeping may endure for a night. But I come to let you know that morning's coming. And when the morning comes, it's whatever time you think and believe in yourself that I'm tired of grieving. Lord, heal me. God sends the morning. <laughs> and when God sends the morning, you won't even remember what grieving was. You'll be blessing God. Seven years, her husband died on her. But listen to what she did. She was a widow of about four scores and four scores and four years, that's 84. A score equals 20 years, each one. Four equals 80, plus four is 84. Which departed not from the temple, but served, listen, but served God with fasting and with prayers day and night. All her days, don't take it too literally that she did nothing but say in the temple, but what the idea God is trying to give you is that all of her days after her father died, she served the Lord. She gave God her best. She spent her time fasting and praying. She didn't even go look for another husband. She gave herself totally to God. What integrity, Pastor. 
to give herself totally to God, to give her body over to God. She didn't worry if she had a tingle. She stayed with God. She didn't worry if things got hard. She stayed with God. And she prayed and she fasted and she believed God as she was in the temple. She just blessed God with her days. Let me tell you something. And that's why I love my mother and father so much because all they lived in front of me was a life about Jesus. And I was inspired by that life. Rose was inspired by that life. Nate was inspired by that life. All we need is one person to live a life of Jesus in front of us. And somebody is going to ask you about that light. That's what we need. We need people who will inspire us. That's what the world is looking for. Somebody that will inspire them to know about Jesus. Because they're seeing all kinds of Christians. Christians that smoke, Christians that drink, Christians that party, and Christians that run the street, Christians that do drugs. Is there anybody who has some integrity that loves the Lord that's making a separation between them and the world? And you're saying, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. And Lord, I just want to be your servant. That's how Anna was. Anna served the Lord with fasting and praying. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with having a good time every now and then. But you know what? You got to pull yourself out of that. Because life is not about pleasure. The Bible tells us, put your affection on things above and not on things of the earth. So that means putting pleasure to the side and trusting God. That means putting pleasure to the side and living for God. Oh, let me tell you something. <clears throat> I had a member that came to this church, and I won't point a finger at him. But when he came to this church, he was smoking cigarettes. And he was smoking it heavily. Oh, but one encounter with God. And the cigarettes were dropped. I had another person that used to drink beer, and they drink beer, but one encounter with God, and they haven't had a beer since. Don't tell me that God can't deliver. Don't tell me that God can't heal. He can heal your wounds if you're open and give it to him. Anna was healed because she sought the Lord. That's why Anna was healed. Hmm. And listen, verse 38, and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that look for the redemption in Jerusalem. Why? Because she knew that they should have known about the word of God that Jesus was soon to come because Isaiah had already said it. They should have known. Isaiah had already said, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. They should have been in the look for it. But listen, how did Anna get the revelation? Because during the dry season, she was with God. During the dry season, she trusted God. So while everybody was trying to live during the intertestamental times and was doing what they wanted to do, there were some like Simeon and Anna who were seeking God. And God gave them a revelation that Jesus came into the building. Anna didn't have to go to Simeon and ask him because when Anna saw the Savior in their arms... She knew that's the salvation of Israel. Who revealed that to her? God did. How did he do it? Because of the time she spent with him. Because of the time she gave to him. This is how, this, let me tell you something. This is how we get a word from the Lord. When we spend time in the presence of God. God will speak to us. God will give us a word. You'll, know the, you'll notice the difference in people when they spend time 
with the Lord. You'll see how God is blessing them and keeping them. Oh, and give them a chance to open up their mouth. And they will tell you good things that God has revealed to them. Mount Olive, in the next year coming in, it's time to come into that year praying and fasting and go through that whole year praying and fasting. I'm saying, I'm not saying fast for a year, no. What I'm saying is, I'm saying is throughout that year. <laughs> come on, okay? <laughs> come in here and I can't find you because you're too skinny. Listen, <laughs> fast and pray throughout the year and let God speak to us like he spoke to Anna and reveal to her what the rest of the nation didn't know. Because Brother Aaron, the Pharisees didn't know it. The scribes didn't know it. The Sadducees didn't know it. But little Anna, who probably was married at the age of 12 years old, because that was the custom, she probably got married that young. But listen, even though she was that young, now she's old. But she believed what God said concerning Jesus. That someone was coming for the nation. So when she saw the baby, God gave her the revelation, that's him. And she told everyone of the salvation that had come to the nation. What a blessing. What a blessing. When you spend time with God, God will reveal things to you. God will give you, listen, a level of discernment that not many people have. See, and that's what we need more around us people that have discernment, people that understand some things, people that are walking in wisdom. Because in these days and times, it's even hard now to recognize who's saved and who's not, who loves the Lord and who doesn't. Because it's bad when the church folks look like unsaved folks. But thank God for Anna, who loved the Lord. And God knew her, and God spoke to her. God knew Micah, and God spoke to Micah. God knew Isaiah, and God spoke to Isaiah. God knew Moses, and God spoke to Moses. And the greater God knows us, the more he will reveal to us. And the main thing we need to ask him to reveal I don't want to know about Leon. Lord, what about me? Don't go to the Lord asking him about the system, Pastor. Go to God and say, Lord, tell me about me. Because, you know, God knows more about you than you know about you. But the one reason why we're not hearing from God about us, because we'd rather go to God for everything else except us. But let me tell you something. Us need some help. <laughs> and if I get a revelation about me, that should help me. Come on and stand with me. God delivers from dryness. He's the only one that can. He's the only one that will. Life is not always fair. full of trial and tribulations and tests, then some good days every now and then. 
Job said, man that is born of a woman are but a few days, and those full of trouble. Because of the sin in the world, we're going to have trouble. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. This is the reason why Mount Olive, we want to reach the world with goods. We want to reach the world with help. And with whatever we have. Because if we can just save one, it's been worth it all. To keep one from going to that hell that was created for the devil and his angels. That's all we, let me tell you something, that would be worth it all. The angels in heaven rejoice more over one soul than the 99 already saved. This, this is the whole reason why we became saved, saints of God. That's to reach those who are not. This is the reason. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, God can use you greatly in this season of your life. All you have to do is trust him. Oh, you're coming out. There's no doubt about it. If you believed it, you should, you should be praising God about now. Amen. You should be blessing him about now. One of the biggest turnarounds ever in this nation. They're not, they're not experiencing people losing their job. They're experiencing people walking out of their job. Stores are closing early because they don't have enough people to man the store. You're walking in stores and can't find people that work there. Why? Because people don't want to work. They're writing articles about how can people stay home and not work. Boy, what a turn. But it's telling us what? Jesus is coming. Because they can't even figure out what's going on in their own nation, their own world. Things are getting so bad. But think about it. When it was bad in the dryness, here came Jesus out of Mary's womb. Here comes the Lord. When they thought all oh, hope was lost and they thought he ain't never coming, here comes Jesus. This is what's happening in our lives right now. Raise your hands with me. Raise your hands with me as a form of and a symbol of surrender. Just surrender unto the Lord your life and your thoughts right now. Come on, just surrender it right now. We're going through a repentance stage right now. We want to ask God for change in our lives, change in our thinking, change in our speaking, change in the things that we hear. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God is bringing change in your life right now as you raise your hand in surrender to him. He's blessing you right now. Finance will be coming your way. More importantly, spiritual blessings coming in your home entering your temple right now because God is in the building. Discernment is coming. Someone is going to get the spirit of prophecy because we're in the presence of the Lord. Anything is possible in the presence of God. Come on, let's, let's welcome his presence. Just begin to worship him and welcome his presence right where you are. Just welcome his presence here. Welcome him and thank him for being in this place with us now. Thank him for sharing his greatness with us. Thank him for sharing his heart with us, for giving us his word. 
for giving us the power to get wealth. Knowing that he has empowered us. He has blessed us. He has encouraged us so many days. And he's going to continue to do so. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We thank you, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We bless you now, oh God. We worship you for who you are. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. All over this house, just worship him. Worship him. Be like the shepherds that worshiped him. Bless him. Bless him right now. Open up your mouth and bless him. Open up your heart and bless him. Hallelujah. Let the devil know he's a liar. My Jesus lives. My Jesus cares. My Jesus loves. We bless you, God. We worship you now. We bless you, God. We praise you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are worthy of your praise, oh God. We worship your holy name. Lord, there's none like you. There's none above you. You are great. You are mighty. You are powerful. You are sovereign. You are majesty. God, be glorified. God, be glorified through us. Be glorified through us. We bless you. We magnify your name. We glorify you. Bless him. Just bless him. Just bless him. Just bless him. It don't matter what you're going through. Bless him. It don't matter what they say about you. Bless him. It doesn't matter what's happening in your life. Bless him. Forget about the money that you need. Just bless him. Now is the time to bless him. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. May be found. Call upon him while he is near. We bless you, God. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, God. We give you praise. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. You're blessing us in the midst of dryness. You're blessing us in hardness. You're blessing us in trouble. You're blessing us in tribulation. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you, God. We worship you. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, God. God bless you, saints.